in high school, I, I started smoking uh, marijuana and um, and then and sort of dabbled in in psychedelic drugs. And then in uh, in, in in my it was my 11th year of high school. I was a major motorcycle wreck and I fractured my skull. Oh. And um, it's truly looking back. It's one of those things where by the grace of God, I'm still alive. Um, we were without a father and my mother didn't teach us to respect him. And um, so I got into all kinds of trouble. I actually got kicked out of high school um, and I didn't care. It didn't matter what I was doing. It was not the right thing because I didn't believe in Jesus. But nevertheless, I went home and um, uh, and I read these little Bible tracks and I prayed my first prayer. And my prayer was, God, if you're there and Jesus, if you're a son, whatever that means, would you show me? I learned to look into the word of God, the precious holy book. Like there's no other book like it in the whole world, right? That testifies of, 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 of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, the, the son of Yahweh. And, and at that moment, God spoke volumes to me in that I knew more than I ever did that truly, that the work of the Lord is in the heart of each individual. And that's all it is. Uh, so here we are with Randy. Uh, we're excited to, to be with him. He uh, was instrumental in somebody else's life uh, that we've interviewed before. And we now have the chance to hear Randy's uh, testimony. Uh, he's going to explain to us where he uh, came from, uh, the parents that he had, his upbringing, and uh, tell us about how he came to know the Lord. So with that, Randy, we'll, uh, we'll give you the stage. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, here we go. So I grew up in Southern California, and um, I grew up in a, in a good home. My father was actually a doctor. He okay. was a, a psychiatrist and a psychoanalyst. And um, I um, uh, just lived a normal, healthy life. I'm actually Jewish by blood, oh, mm -hmm. both sides, both parents. And um, uh, grew up, though, a uh, secular humanist. We had no religion. We had no faith. And it never mattered, never considered it. I mean, the weekends were the weekends, but I was completely ignorant. Uh, I never went to church, never went to synagogue. Mm -hmm. And um, it was pretty irrelevant. And, and nobody I knew um, growing up uh, Jewish, um, I mean, I had one friend I remember. This was in elementary school. He was uh, he was get he was going to go through a bar mitzvah, and I said, "So, what's that mean? You're getting bar mitzvah?" And he says, "Well, you get a lot of money." <laughs> uh, and 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 then my parents got divorced when I was twelve, and basically, ultimately, uh, mine and my my brothers and sisters, our lives fell apart. I have two sisters and a brother. And um, we moved neighborhoods. We, we moved into a, uh, a more Protestant neighborhood. And in high school, um, I had some friends. They, they went to church, and, but they didn't know the Lord either. I mean, they had talked about some of the fun they had on some of their youth outings, et cetera. So I really had no exposure. I actually went to church once, a friend of my mother's who had faith, and she, and she took me to church. And all I remember was the donuts mm. uh, in Sunday school. But anyway, um, but we were we were good kids. But it, it was the '60s. Right. Um, I'm 73 years old, and and um, all the turmoil going on in our country with Vietnam, and and so in high school, I, I started smoking uh, marijuana, and um, and then and sort of dabbled in in psychedelic drugs, and then in uh, in, in in my, it was my 11th year of high school, I was a major motorcycle wreck and I fractured my skull. Oh. And um, it's truly looking back, it's one of those things where by the grace of God, I'm still alive mm -hmm. and I'm paralyzed. And um, it, ultimately it was two months rehabilitation, reconstructing my face. And, and it was a basilar skull fracture. And, um, and then in, in my 12th year of school, what had happened is I had lost all interest and um, 
I, I focused, my, my mother was not kind in teaching us that the divorce had nothing to do with us. And she really was uh, very, very cruel to my father. And my father um, did what he could, but he, it was, it was, the, you know, it, it was that era, you know, when the expectations that uh, on a father towards their children, it wasn't, was different then than it is now. Right. right. You know, my father would work, he'd come home, he'd have his martini and read his newspaper and we'd have dinner together and he'd go and do some more work. And, um, and we did things together. I mean, there was a life, but it was, it was just, I don't know, sort of a tip, tip, typical nuclear family, you know, but um, we were without a father and my mother didn't teach us to respect him. And um, so I got into all kinds of trouble. I actually got kicked out of high school um, and I didn't care. And um, I mean, when they said, hey, if you don't get in any more trouble, you can come back and graduate. And, and I said, you mean I don't have to go through this garbage? And it, it was it, looking back, it was really sad. You know, I mean, these are mild, you know, milestones in, in children's lives, you know, you know, high school and friends and graduation and things and cherishing these things. And um, so you know, just continued on this and then, you know, uh, one day I'm on the beach in Santa Monica and uh, these Jesus people came down there and they were different. They were a phenomena. They were singing and dancing and and uh, then they were baptized as people. And I was going to go um, and, and check them out. But then my pride got the best of me when all my friends standing around me started mocking them. But next thing I know, two young ladies are there talking to me about Jesus. And I'm just thinking they're cute. And um, uh, and and but they talked to me about Jesus, but looking back, it wasn't exactly a really sensitive witness. Pretty much, they were just pretty iconic, iconoclastic. No matter what I believed in or what I was doing, you know, I was going to, you know, junior college and studying different things, and it didn't matter what I was doing, it was not the right thing because I didn't believe in Jesus. But nevertheless, I went home and um, uh, and I read these little Bible tracks, and mm -hmm. I prayed my first prayer. And my prayer was, God, if you're there, and Jesus, if you're a son, whatever that means, would you show me? And I knew I didn't know why I existed. Mm -hmm. And and I and I knew that my relationships uh, with people, especially girls, were very, very shallow and self-centered. And I cried myself to sleep. And it began a, a very circuitous journey. Um, I... Um, I had an uncle who lived up in Big Sur, and I, I took a massive amount of, of, of LSD, and um, and then uh, I had some experiences, and I went up towards uh, Oregon, where my sister was going to college, and I went into a New Age bookstore, and um, I bought all these books. I had this incredible hunger, what's truth, and I bought all these different books on different religions and started reading them. Really? And we went back yeah. down towards Southern California. And, um, and 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 before, I mean, I had some experiences. I mean, I at one point, I, you know, I, I could have had my head blown off. You know, I mean, a drug deal gone bad. I had a 22 in my head with a silencer on it in the back of a van in Venice Beach. And, and the other man was a black man, and I'm a white guy, and, you know, whatever. And my, my friends gave him up the money. I mean, just stupid stuff. Right. I mean, I look back and, and these kinds of experiences and I consider the fact that I'm still alive. It, it's by the grace of God. But anyway, so we, we were in Southern California. I was reading these different books and somebody says, hey, there's a big old surf meet in Padre Island down in Texas. It's a big party. Let's go. And I said, OK, fine. You know, I mean, we were pretty happy go lucky. Life was pretty cheap back then. You know, I mean, you could buy gas for a quarter of a gallon and cigarettes for a quarter of a pack. And, and um, so we hopped in our, in my van and we, we went off towards Texas. And um, the, the truth is the amount of drugs we had with us once again, um, but the grace of God that I'm not in Texas prison, because I would still be in Texas prison, wow. the amount of drugs. We had with us. And, um, you know, back then they'd put you in jail for a roach. Right. And, um, and and so we, we, on the way down there, my best friend, I said, you know, everything I'm reading is somebody's opinion of truth. 
um, is there anything that's just like God talking? And he goes, well, what about a Bible? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Bible. So we actually went to a Bible bookstore and um, I bought a Bible and the lady said, well, start right here in Matthew, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we're down there at the beach uh, and we're hanging around and there was this uh, commune down there and they had a rock and roll band and soup kitchen and they're out telling people about Jesus. Okay. And um, I was getting tired of being stoned and getting tired of uh, just just a shallow life. And um, I remember, though, you know, it's like people getting their car stuck in the sand, you know, and, and people are going, hey, let's go get them out of the sand for Jesus. And I'm thinking, well, why don't you just get them out of the sand? Because they're stuck. You know, it's the nice thing to do. <laughs> but nevertheless, they... I was I was attracted. They were a phenomenon. They were different. And I went over and um, ultimately I prayed the sinner's prayer. I didn't really understand it, but I prayed it. And they believed in the subsequent infilling of the Holy Spirit. So I prayed to receive the Holy Spirit. And and then they you, so just let your your tongue and your mind go and speak in tongues, etc. And then they said, so now you believe in Jesus. Now you're saved. And they said, well, you don't have to follow us. You don't have to come live with us, but we have a commune. And they said, the church is, the church, they said, the church is dead is, and, and the Jesus movement is lukewarm, but we are sold out for Jesus. So anyway, I made the decision to go and live with these people. And I said, here's the keys to my van. Here's the keys to my apartment. You guys can have all my stuff. I'll see you later. Wow. wow. So I went with these folks and, um, and I went live with them and studied the scripture. And we used to have lots of lots of Bible classes and and, and study the scripture. And then we'd go out on the streets and witness for the Lord. And we we drive around in, in big uh, like a like a, a a small truck, you know, in the back uh, a van, you know, like a twenty foot box van. And we go to the parks, we go to the airport, we go to concerts to tell people about the Lord. And I live with these people in Texas and in upstate New York and um, New York City and uh, east side of lower east side of New York and Connecticut, different places. And um, ultimately, though, you know, they're teaching us the scripture. And I started to see that there was falsehoods. And especially when, you know, they their leader had prophesied that uh, California would fall in the sea when the comet Kahuta came by. And it didn't happen. And they'd show me enough scripture there in, in Isaiah where it says that if a prophecy is given and it's false, it's not God's prophet. Mm -hmm. But the anatomy mm -hmm. of a cult is even though you see that something's wrong, it's still hard to put two and two together. Right. But more and more, I, I was feeling disgruntled. People were more into the leader of the group or they were adulating him to an extent that was beyond normal. Right. Anyway, I went back to Los Angeles uh, under the the in, in, the purpose was to get some inheritance that I had coming. And um, ultimately, I started reading other books. And um, I actually was reading, you know, Ram Dass's book and Siddhartha and, and started even reading the Quran a little bit. And um, I made a decision to leave. And... Um, uh, the group that I was with was a group by the name of the Children of God. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know what to do. I knew I didn't want to stay in Los Angeles any longer. I didn't want to get back into my old lifestyle. So my sister bought me a backpack and I had a ring and I hocked it and I had $35 and I, she dropped me off on the Pacific Coast Highway and I took off hitchhiking north and went to Oregon. In Oregon, I got some food stamps and trade them to my friends and had another whatever $35 and I made it to Ann Arbor, Michigan and there got some work at the Blues Festival. It was a college town and then um, uh, and then I went ultimately ended up in upstate New York where um, I met my wife and um, I looking back I realized that I knew a lot about the Lord. I had led people to the Lord but I did not know the Lord. Mm. And um, so I, I met my wife and she grew up in an Episcopal home in the Midwest, really solid parents, wonderful people. And um, I can imagine her dad probably thought, oh my God, look at this guy my, my daughter hooked up with, you know. And um, 
but anyway, uh, we moved in together and ultimately we got married and I really enjoyed the community living and, um, tried to see if anybody wanted to, um, start a commune and where the my friends I had made in this college town I lived in and nobody wanted to. So we took off traveling in our pickup truck and we were aiming towards Mexico. We wanted to be warm and, um, we visited a couple of small communes and a very large commune, the Stephen Gaskin commune. His wife, Ina May, is very famous for natural childbirth. Okay. And not a Christian yeah. community, but but a very functional community and people seeking solutions to the world's problems. Right. Mm. And yeah. um, and so we we left there and we headed on into Mexico and we went way, way down into Mexico, down towards Oaxaca. And then we we thought about going further and I just felt like, you know, I met people there that you could live down there very cheap, you know, and, but I felt a real destiny as an American that I needed to come back. So we came back and we visited my sister who had gotten into a group that turned out to also be a very, very awful uh, cult group. It was an Eastern religion one and uh, it actually destroyed her life and, 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 uh, and and then we can, ended up driving, you know, we were going to visit friends and it turned out my wife was pregnant and um, uh, and, and we ended up here in Mendocino County where we live. And um, uh, we settled down here and we started meeting Christians. And um, uh, ultimately it was the Lord's working. I mean, we, there's a lot more to those people I met who had been in the same cult group I had been in. Um, but uh, we ended up uh, at a place here over over in Mendocino County called the Lord's Land, and and um, uh, my wife accepted the Lord, and I had we had moved actually over into um, in, into inland here into Willits, and a, and a man came into a food store I was working in, and he had talked to me um, about the Lord, and um, the next time I ran into him in town. We were, uh, he, he, he's talking to me about the Lord. And, and um, at, at this point, I would have said that my, my worldview was new age. Okay. You know, because okay. I, 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 what had been presented to me in the name of the Lord had turned out to be false. Mm -hmm. And also I had looked back at um, the fact that the group that had witnessed to me in Los Angeles and Santa Monica was the same group that I had joined in Texas. And it was a very strange coincidence that it begged a very serious question to me. So what are you saying to me, God, that you would use the same cult group to talk to me twice? Or are you really real? Right. And ultimately, um, the answer to that is, is that God placed it in my heart to not settle for anything other than really knowing him. Mm. And... Um, so my wife, we we would move to inland, but we were over at the Lord's Land at a Bible study, and um, my wife used to get terrible headaches, and she left, and we went out, and we were in my truck, and and this really wonderful, amazing Christian man, um, he's not alive anymore, but has amazing testimonies, and he came and he witnessed to my wife, and she accepted Christ, and and so ultimately we started getting involved. Well, actually we were living in uh, our, our baby. He was two years old at this point about, and then we, we were living in this little trailer court and uh, this couple, um, this Oki couple from Bakersfield came into town and rented this building and put a sign out that said revival. And it, it's almost like the Lord sent him there just for us. I mean, it was just this small group of people and they were just lovely, lovely people. And, um, and, and then, and then I don't know how long it was, but they left and, and they said, well, just find yourself a, a Pentecostal church. So we did, we found ourselves a Pentecostal church and we were there for a long time. And I could say it was not a really healthy experience. Um, three different pastors, very, very emotional, mm -hmm. uh, constantly confessing, um, and, and, and trying to, proclaim, uh, let's say, what God has done, but the victories that people were claiming weren't really happening. Mm -hmm. And so it, it wasn't a really healthy time. I mean, it was a time I look back and I'm going, I wish some older gentleman had come into my life and said, I see who you are. 
let me let me mentor you. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, almost like um, uh, I, I, I was looking for for what I was going to do with my life, and I joined the uh, I, I, I the, the man who ran the union hall here in town. He let me put my name on the list without paying any money because we didn't have any money at the time. And um, he looked at me and he said, "You know, when you kids were going to rock festivals and throwing up all over yourselves, my wife and I there were there wiping the vomit off your shirts." You know, I mean, there was a man with wisdom, you know, and 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 he expressed it. And um, uh, you know, I was just trying to find a way to make a living at that point because I had squandered those years when people are getting their education, when they're learning to trade, you know. And my father just really hadn't been there in that way. And of course, my mom had undermined his authority. So, you know, I was looking for answers. But here we were, and um, uh. We started getting, we, we left that church. We actually ended up becoming part of another church of a Calvary chapel in town. And, and, and that was another lesson in my life. About a year later, the, the pastor um, said, you know, I'm closing the doors. And uh, it's like, we were shocked. There was a small group and, um, and, and, and that spoke volumes to me in that, that people can meet together in a church and you never really break through the, the outer shell and really get to become intimate and really get to know each other. And um, so uh, we weren't part of a church. And um, but in that in that period of our life, my, my second son, who my first son, when he was born, we weren't Christian. But my second son, we were Christians and, and we had actually named him Judah. And our first son is named, we named him Huckleberry, but, uh, and he goes by the name of Huck. And, and so, um, but what happened is, is my wife is, as we, as she studied the word of God, we were in Bible study fellowship. She got in tune with her heart and she saw that what she thought she married, that I didn't really have the answers that she was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so we were Christians and we were going to church and we were, um, we, we prayed, we, we read the word, we listened to Christian music, and it was all out of a sincere heart. But it was a revelation of that there was something that my wife really wanted from me that I didn't have to give her. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand it because I was, I said, honey, I'm faithful. I work hard. And we struggled. We were really working hard to put, put you know, make ends meet. But she had this need. And it was very, very hard. Our life was very, you know, we were Christians and very lonely. And one day I, um, you know, at one point I said, you know, and I screamed it, you know, I go, I want a divorce. And I didn't mean that. What I meant is I want this pain to go away. Mm -hmm. I don't want a divorce. I, you know, because when my father left my mom, I said, I'll never do that. Right. And yet here I was in that same feeling, that same sense of despair. And, and I couldn't understand, I'm a Christian, and, but we don't have this victory. But that was the beginning, I would say, of the Lord really beginning to uncover what it is he needed to do. At one point, I had said to my wife, I said, let's become, let's go, what right do we have as Americans to be here in this rich country? We should go overseas or somewhere and become missionaries. And my wife said, well, I just don't feel led. Okay, okay, well, so we went on with our lives and, 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 but we, and we, and we were struggling, you know, to find love. And then, but that, that sense and that burden of, uh, of, of, of not, not being missionaries. And, uh, and then one day, what had happened? So we were part of a church and one day I, there's a community church in our, in, in where we are in, in Redwood Valley. And, um, Originally, I never would have gone there because I knew people who had gone there and it was extremely legalistic under a particular pastor. But I said, let's go. And I, we walked in that door there and um, the pastor was just as kind as could be. And I explained our past and he and he said, fine, just come. And when on the issue of um, uh, of the gifts of the spirit uh, and, and, and they're, uh, they're a cessationist church, I'd never heard about that. And um and I said, okay, well, I don't really know. I just know what my experience has been. And I'll, I'll just plead no contendery on this issue. And um, we started going there. And that was in 1988. And we've been there ever since. And I would say that was where the beginning of our faith started to really get grounded. Because mm -hmm. instead of looking to have some experience of God, 
Mm. I learned to look into the word of God, the precious holy book. Like there's no other book like it in the whole world, right? That testifies of, 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 of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, the, the son of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. the, and who, who died for our sin, who, who, who took the wrath of, of our father upon him for our sake so that we could be set free and give us hope for eternity. And, and what is the answer to all of the world's travail? And um, so my wife and I continued on and um, with our lives and um, uh, and. I'm not even sure when the point was, but at some point, um, our lives changed. The 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 trust that that my wife uh, didn't have for me because I didn't. There was never ever any adultery, or there was never any, you know, failing like that. Um, but ultimately, she would say it's the anger that's in you. And I couldn't understand this. And um, so all I can say is uh, this year we celebrate our 50th anniversary. Oh, wow. And wow. we are in love. We, um, the Lord healed our relationship. And he gave me compassion. He gave me understanding of what my father went through. And anybody goes through, that goes through a divorce. And I judge no one. And I judge no one for any thing they're going through. And um, uh, I told you that, that there's a man that I um, uh, want you to meet. And uh, uh, he, he had moved to, to our village from, um, from, from Boston. And um, he's, he's, he was a missionary. I had heard he had come here. And I, I, one day, I, I used to... Uh, uh, have the children for children's church and I was walking over there with the kids and I met him he, he's co completely blind and um uh and I and I said oh I love missionaries I wanted to be a missionary and the Lord wouldn't let us be missionaries overseas he wouldn't let us go and um and 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 I'm and I'm moving on and he puts his hand on my shoulder and um he says let me tell you I've known people, men who forced their wives to go to the mission field and destroyed their relationship and destroyed it. And, and at that moment, God spoke volumes to me in that I knew more than I ever did that truly that the work of the Lord is in the heart of each individual. And that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with geography. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is where he's placed me in this community. And, um, and he, and he's, made my life victorious and um uh we have we have two sons and they're both uh believers in the lord and they married christian wives christian women you know and they and they, and they have children we have grandchildren so anyway um we have a great life here in this community and part of this church that um, um and anyway so that's pretty much yeah yeah you know that's the story of my life so that's a great testimony i it, it's um i find something interesting what you said uh that, that the change from experience to a heart matter or uh to diving into god's word and 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 the answers being there uh, I find that uh, you see it on uh, YouTube and that, and uh, you see it uh, around you. Uh, people always looking for the experience. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, I can testify that in my own life. Uh, growing up, I've, I've I've seen that sort of thing in the past. Um, at the same time, I've seen some uh, going to certain churches. I've seen some positive things that I really liked about the church, and then I've seen some some things that I uh, I didn't necessarily agree with. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so it's it's interesting. The uh, see uh, word I'm looking for um, uh, sanctification. That's it. Mm -hmm. We were talking about sanctification the other day, and it seems to be coming up quite a bit, and how that uh, God sanctifies us in a moment, but yet 
he continues to sanctify us over our lifespan mm -hmm. and how it can be an instant um and yet over the lifetime and uh, i see that uh, uh with your testimony here that uh you know god saved you but he's still teaching you and still uh bringing you into that uh that fold more and more all yes. the time and yes. how he takes off those rough edges along the along the way yes yeah yes 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 yeah randy looking back your uh, journey with uh, jesus mm -hmm. who is jesus to you yeah good question in your marriage yeah your... jesus he's a fulfillment of all old testament prophecy and He's the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the earth. He's the final atonement. The, the, the Jews would, God set it up, the, 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 uh, the sacrifice, um, even going all the way back to the garden where um, God established the, the animal sacrifice. He said as a substitute for every firstborn son. Mm -hmm. that life was already destroyed and ruined at that point and and he let it go on until he got so evil and wicked that that uh he destroyed the earth you know except for saving noah's family and um he established uh he he spoke to abraham he he, he says if you believe me and go to a place where you don't know that I will multiply your seed like the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. And uh, the, he, Abraham believed and he was considered righteous. And yet looking at the life of Abraham and all the other people in the Old Testament, um, so 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 many failures so much doubt and um uh, he just chose this uh one group of people to manifest himself through mm -hmm. and um ultimately um at the right time um when when the, when the lord ordained it that uh, christ came and he he came to john the baptist and uh and john says oh you should baptize me. And Jesus says, no, we should fulfill all truth and all righteousness. And you should baptize me. And he saw the Holy Spirit come down upon him. And ultimately, when uh, when John had finished his job, um, he died. He got his head cut off. Um, and yet Jesus, uh, he ultimately, uh, the Jews, they, they, they wanted... Um, to be uh, set free from the oppression of Rome. Right. And um, uh, that's not God's purpose. God's purpose is to set us free from the oppression of our own hearts and our sinful nature. And um, truly, when I look in my heart, when I look in my mind and I see my sinful nature, my sinful thoughts, um, uh, and I go, yes, I am truly worthy of death. And yet, when I look to the Lord, when I stand before him, when I gather together with, with the brothers and sisters and worship him and I lift up my hands before him and I know I'm only doing it because he made this way for me. He took my punishment. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going through the Old Testament again right now. I'm in the book of Deuteronomy mm -hmm. and I'm almost done with it. And as I've been reading it, I just overwhelmed with it's so hard to grasp and all i can say about it is that it, it's like this is impossible to do i i i said recently i said it, it's like a son going to his father and say uh father said do this and the father and the son says i father i don't understand and father says you don't have to understand just do it mm -hmm. And, and God's requirements for holiness were impossible to fulfill. 
the law which shows us that uh, none of us can live up to it. And right. this and this curse, I mean, the world is freaked out right now. Everybody's freaked out. Everybody was freaked out over COVID. Everybody's freaked out over climate change. And um, uh, the world's full of fear and, and, and people are looking for answers. Mm. They want to know, how do we fix this? And people look to themselves. And it, it astounds me how blind we are that we can't look out. I look at the creation. I'm overwhelmed. It's like a clock. Two, day, two mornings ago, I looked out in the morning. I'm usually up at like 5.36. I looked out and there was a three-quarter moon in the morning sky. And I'm just thinking about this, this, this object that circles around the earth. And it, it's just amazing. It's unbelievable. It just testifies of a creator. And then the scripture, which gives us a glimpse because the letter kills the spirit brings life but it gives us a glimpse into the majesty of this creator who is saying i love you i love you so much yeah i give you yeah. my son yeah. so that your minds can be cleansed that you can know that it's okay it's okay and so through faith we have hope and with hope we gain love. And uh, so Christ is the firstborn of the dead. And the hope for this world is the resurrection. And one day when he determines the time is right, he will return. And I, I look right now at the current turmoil that's going on in the Middle East because the, it, it speaks volumes when, when Israel became a nation in forty eight. I, I'm a dispensationalist, and and I I I, I believe I, I I can't even not see these things because in in the scripture where it talks about earthquakes, famines, pestilence, wars, and rumors of wars, and that love would grow cold, but this gospel, this good news, will be preached into all the world for a witness to me, and then the end will come, and. He said, I mean, he, he, he said when, when, when he sent Paul as, as the, when, when he converted Paul and Paul was, was the, the, the apostle to the Gentiles, that the, the point is, is his salvation is for all people, all people. And um, so the spirit and the bride say, come, let him that hears say, come. So that's how I see any Christian's life, my life that any opportunity to share him is a privilege. Right. Because I'm speaking about the almighty God who he spoke and creation came into existence. This is beyond my, it's beyond all our comprehension. It's, mm. it's just like the world tries to determine, you know, what is the, what is the, 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 the beginning of the cause of the big bang and we can define it in scientific terms. Mm -hmm. But outside of the of the of, of, of there being a creator, yeah. no wonder our world is so hopeless and and the and and killings and and kids in despair and and taking drugs and fentanyl and people looking for answers. It's 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 awful. It's because our, our schools, our educational system, we're teaching our children that there's no purpose, that life is just some random, mm -hmm. in, you know, without causality, and yet. The scripture reveals to us, you know, Christ, who's the son of God, which is what you first asked me to before I went off preaching and everything. But, um, but so. something you touched on there without uh, quoting scripture, but you, you really did mention it. Um, and that is how the, the word of God is foolishness to those who don't believe. And right. yeah. you look out and you see a three quarter moon and you see. God's handiwork and you can see the how people are, are they're, they're waxed over with coldness and and such and you can see that that is exactly how God said it was going to be and yet those who don't believe find all that foolishness mm -hmm. and that's it's, it's amazing how um when uh, when a person does become a Christian and when they when they those those yeah. 
Yeah, when their eyes are opened and they see things in a whole different mm. way. Yeah. It's it's mm. quite fantastic. Yeah. Today yeah. At, today at the sure. uh, worship, uh, our pastor, Pastor Bruce, teach us something in Nehemiah. And uh, when you were talking about Jesus, you talk about the fear in the world today. And uh, he reminded us in the Bible, mm -hmm. it's over 300 times God instructed that to not fear mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and to rejoice yeah. always. And uh, yeah, everything we see around the world teach us other way. To, we have a thousand reasons to fear, but in God, we need uh, to leave everything on his lap and yes. to trust him, everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 and it is. And 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 in, in all honesty, I, I, I just said this to, um, to somebody at church this morning, I, that, that where I first started this, I find I'm still right here. I'm still at the foot of the cross and trying to really grasp the the, the full depth of, of John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. you know, right? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever lived, believes in him wouldn't die but have everlasting life. And and, and I feel that, it, and it is, it's the sanctification, right? He said he must ascend that the Holy Spirit would come and, and he's working in the last days. And I, I'm very thankful that, he saved my life he saved my wife and us together and he saved our relationship mm -hmm. and uh, uh and and he's opened my eyes to see him you know paul said we see through a glass darkly right you know but when we see him we'll see him face to face and and i i consider it the greatest privilege of my life to uh be called his son uh, by the gift of, of jesus sacrifice amen and, Randy, Randy, 50 years of marriage. Yeah. And uh, we yeah. just we just started. <laughs> yeah. However, last night we went to a 60th wedding anniversary, wow. which was uh it was uh it was exciting. Uh I've known uh this couple since I was a, a young teenager, uh 13, 14 years old. Um as a matter of fact, uh when I got baptized, uh, their son was right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeremy on so mm -hmm. uh, he had okay. baptized, baptized the year before and we've been friends ever since and so uh, it was uh, 50 years 60 years you know yeah. you, you might be able to find uh, an anniversary card for 50 years but try and find one for 60 years <laughs> did you find one or you had to write one you had to make one up uh, I ran into the Dollarama, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> uh, just said happy anniversary. But uh, uh -huh. okay, all right, that's safe. Yeah, yeah, safe. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Randy, yeah. thank you so much for your testimony and for taking the time with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we would very mm -hmm. much like to to come back and visit you again, and uh, um, you know, maybe even have you preach on a, on a subject or share something that's on your heart if you would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I say I'm not a preacher. I, I just, um, I, I can speak from my heart. You know, I, 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 I look, I look at our pastor who um, he, he's brilliant and um, his father was a professor and, um, and, and, he, and he, he writes a sermon every week and he memorizes it and, and presents it to us. And I think, Oh, that it were, it is such hard work to to you know dissect the word of God and to to present it to people. I'm I'm really much better as just an evangelist and just talking to people one on one. Right. And so um Randy, would you close us in prayer? I certainly will. Thank you. Lord, what a privilege it is to uh, call you our father and thank you uh, for this honor and privilege to meet Garth and Chantel. Thank you for their work, uh, their love for people. 